Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're looking at about a 1987 Sony model KV1997R. Uh, this was brought to me by the original owner who's had it since it was new. Um, I even have the remote and everything with it, which is kind of cool. It's in pretty nice shape. It's got a little bit of wear and tear up here, but the doors are intact. Uh, it's got the famous HIT input, uh, which I'm assuming was for VCRs and stuff and camcorders. You could just connect right there to the front RF input. Uh, very nice shape overall. However, it's dead. Uh, it recently just quit working. And the last person to service this was my buddy Herman Ackerman at Reynolds TV, who unfortunately passed away a couple years ago. Uh, he was one of the last TV shops in San Diego, and unfortunately I didn't get an opportunity to interview him before he went because he was literally working up to the point where he passed away. And he was a busy guy since he was the only one. So we're going to open this thing up and we're going to check it out and see why it's dead and if we can fix it. There's the famous sticker. Um, he was there for probably a good 25 plus years. Um, yeah, rest in peace, my friend. He was a great guy. Okay, well, here she is all apart. Two screws, uh, you got that one there loosened, and you got that one there loosened, and it just pulls out from the back. So the good news is, is that we don't have any obliteration of the main fuse, which suggests that there probably wasn't an overload. That's a good sign. Um, it's pretty clean on the inside, a little bit of dust. Indicative of uh, previous service. There's a little bit of dust here and there, but otherwise not bad. So <clears throat> my assumption is, is the main problem is going to be in the standby 5-volt uh, supply and the 12-volt supply that kicks in the relay. That's usually what happens. You can see these caps here have been replaced already, so that was definitely a problem part. But uh, you got this over here, which is definitely original. You've got some bulged caps over here in the uh, regulator. <clears throat> this one here is definitely pissed off. Uh, we need to check underneath there and make sure it hasn't peed. But really, um, and then these resistors here look like they're alive. They haven't burned open or anything. So we need to check underneath and see if there's any sort of physical damage. And then uh, go from there. You can definitely see some previous resoldering work that was done. Although those parts there, although the caps look nice, the soldering looks original. So maybe those are uh, not happy. We have to check them. Yeah, nothing obvious yet. Okay, well let's do some brief checks on those capacitors we saw. And see if any of them are open in the standby supply, because that would definitely piss some things off. Alright, so just a quick survey says here. I'm trying to hold the meter in place so you can see the readings. That one's pretty dead. That one's in okay shape. Okay shape, probably failing. Okay shape, probably failing. Um, the bulgy one down here in the 12 volt supply is wide open. So, since that's part of the 12 volt supply, my thoughts is, is that it's probably a goner. And it sits right next to a heat source, so I can see that kind of slowly baking itself. It was also a cheap china capacitor, so I'm not thrilled about that. Uh, the pincushion amplifier and things really need to be resoldered too. Uh, we can focus on that. That electrolytic there for the pincushion is still kind of alive. So I think what I'm going to do now is remove those caps in the standby supply. This guy for sure. He's just flat out open. 
get some stuff to trim my saw to wick. This guy was definitely trash. Uh, yeah, a lot of these were just mediocre testing. And this is kind of the shotgun approach to it. And I thought those caps were pretty new looking, but they're obviously, since the solder is still looks like the rest of the set that it's probably not new capacitors and that's why they test so poor, poorly uh, but my thought is definitely the the big filter on the 12 volt supply that's open that's that's pretty important we definitely need to do some resoldering on this regulator i see up here And in the pin cushion circuit a little. But right now I'm just taking the solder off. There's a lot of these guys here need to get cleaned up. It's the old while you're in here. Yep. My goal is to do enough work on it that I don't have to see it for a while, but you never can tell anymore with these old sets. They're old, unless you replace every single component, which is impractical. There's always going to be something that goes wrong. But for the most part, these late 80s Trinitrons were reliable. And usually the CRTs in them are decent. Okay. So let's flip this thing topside. So you for sure are no good. You are a what? 22 at 250. So that's not a 12 volt supply. It was next to a 12 volt test point though. Interesting. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit, some Q-tip with an alcohol on it, clean the board. Thankfully none of that leaked through. And let's just change that one out. All right, so we got that guy. This is one of the worst testing ones. One microfarad at 160. That's really not too bad for ESR for that kind of thing, but I've got a replacement for that. Now let's see, you are a 3350. Ooh, this one's peeing. Clean that up too. That's a 10 at 160. So this isn't standby. This is like regular power supply. Another 10 at 160. Okay. So I've got replacements for those. We'll pop some new caps in there. And then we'll actually do some troubleshooting on the standby. All right, we got our caps in place now. Let's go ahead and solder them up. And I know this isn't the best vantage, but this is where I can 
out the camera and it not get in the way of things. That's that. Got my flush cutters here, and everyone's going to look at the side of my shirt. I don't want anything falling down behind that shield that I can't see, so that's why I'm grabbing the leads. solder this little film cap that I by accident desoldered. Okay. We could also do this weird thing where we actually test the power tech switch. And of course this is the time where my camera mount's gonna bust, so yeah, this is always fun. All right. So down here are the tack switches. It's going to be something something weird if uh, the tack switch was just bad. Yeah, it certainly isn't great, is it? Let's check it against this one. That one reads about 0.5 ohms on the ESR meter, which is good. One ohm. That one's really good. That one's not great. Picture up, picture down. But the power really doesn't register worth a damn. Uh, now, he didn't tell me whether he tried it with the remote or not. Of course, who knows if he even still has the remote. So, I'm going to take a gamble here and clean that tack switch best I can. And see if that will make it behave a little better. There it is from the top side. Now the way I'll typically do this is I'll saturate this with uh, deoxid D5 and just work it in a circular motion as I press. And that will usually break up whatever oxide's in there and make it so that it's usable again. We'll have to try that. So I'm just going to get in here, essentially soak it, just let the capillary action pull it all in. And then we'll get we'll go to town working it. Sometimes you get lucky in these clean up, and other times you need to replace it. I'm hoping for the uh, former. If we're lucky. It isn't a standby problem, it's uh, a silly switch and he just didn't bother to try it with the remote. But knowing my luck, it won't be that easy. Alright, now that we got that worked in a little bit, let's uh, test it again. Alright, so there's our power switch again. Put the meter on it, give it a push. Yep, it's pretty good. Compare that with the others. The others could use a good cleaning too. 
I think I'll do a quick quick rework on all of these here. Clean them up and then we'll uh we'll see if that makes it run. I don't know if it will, but it's worth a shot. Alright, so we got the board slid back in. Let me uh, plug it in here. See if we can get anywhere. Well, that was a surprise. Ooh, she's bright. Let's turn that picture down a little bit. Huh, wasn't expecting that. <laughs> of course, now you're not going to turn back on again, are you? There we go. It's slow to respond. And it forgot my uh, settings already. Also, we have question marks. I don't know if you can see them up there in the corner. Yeah, we got question marks there. So something going on with the, uh, the 5 volt supply. And now we've lost our sound here. Let's go make sure we're on. Yeah, we're on normal. Not normal, not cable. Uh, let's see if we can actually get a picture on it. So this is channel 11, which is picking up aspects of channel 4. And I can't tune up or down past a certain point. You get to channel 125 here, and then we go to 8, 9, 10, 11, and then back to 125. So if I switch over to cable TV, we start at 10. So I don't know. I, do I have to hold these? There we go. All right, so there's channel four. We're going to add you. It definitely isn't tuning correctly. Uh, we've got some fine tuning issues. We got brightness, we got sharpness. We got color. We got tint control. Um, definitely got some pincushion issues. Let's see if we switch over to regular. Got some convergence issues. But yeah, definitely some bowing here. Um, but I'm more concerned about the complete and utter lack of memory. All right, so she's off right now. Turn it back on. True, that's just so slow to respond. And I know the switch is good, so that isn't it. So we need to troubleshoot our uh, low voltage supply and our logic for sure, because it's not responding anymore now and the one time i did get it to respond it had completely forgotten everything so we need to take a look into that so it looks like we're going to have to put this on hold for a little bit until the service literature gets here uh, i found an original copy but it's going to take about three to five days before it arrives uh, but in any case uh, the main points of contention is that it's very unresponsive uh, to front panel commands. It doesn't remember your volume channel and whatever settings, so we have to look at the microprocessor and 5 volt sections. But I'll be able to better troubleshoot that when the service literature gets here because the board's just too densely packed to do any kind of basic troubleshooting on it. So for now, this will be part one of a multi-part series and getting this up and running. It's got a nice bright CRT, which is why it's worth the effort. 
and uh, we'll see if we can make this one happy again. But for now, uh, thanks for watching, guys. More stuff to come. Uh, we're going to get back into that predicted chassis because I have everything now to get it onto it. So we'll pull the board, clean it up, replace the sockets, do the uh, infamous couplets, and see if we can get that one up and running again, too. So until then, thanks for watching.